What if I told you that all this time you have been the one holding yourself back from becoming successful in your network marketing business? What we do is we try to label moments as good or bad. And when you label a moment as bad, it now does not have the opportunity to become good. Are there certain people you'd like to talk about your business opportunity? Is there a specific neighborhood you love to visit and host an event just because you feel that's where the real customers are? This is a problem that has been making you miss out on opportunities. Just like you, I too have had this challenge. But today, I'll teach you how to deal with this and make progress in your business. Imagine you went fishing after you moved to a new town one early morning. You come across the first fishing pond, but it's surrounded by weeds and the water looks very muddy. So you decide to search further and you come across a neat pond free from any bushes or grasses. The bath that leads to this is also very clear and so you walk through and decide that this is the best place to fish. But after spending your entire day you couldn't catch even a single fish. While walking back home you meet a group of fishermen. You notice the large fish in their pockets and you can't help but ask which pond they had such an amazing catch and they point right to the pond you walked past. One of the fishermen looks at you with a big smile and he says, it doesn't look inviting, right? That's why no one goes there. But that's where the big fish are. You walk home exhausted and make a promise to go there the next day. And here's the thing, appearance can be deceiving. And this is one of the first traps a lot of beginners in this business fall into. When trying to create new connections, they assess people based on how well they dress, how well they articulate or speak, or the model of cars they drive. This is a mistake and will really be a blocker in the growth of your network marketing business. I'm here to provide help so you don't fall into this trap and stumble on your path to success. The key point to have in mind is your goal. For instance, for the fishermen, this goal was supposed to be catching fish at the end of the day, but he got distracted. Rather than ask which bond would give me the result I want, he was focused on which bond was clear and comfortable for fishing. And at the end of the day, there was no result. So the rule is pretty simple, avoid pre-judgment. When you meet new people, you may be tempted to judge them by the way they dress or speak or their background or even the level of education. You already make a decision in your head that the person may not be your ideal partner. You could also have a specific bias about certain people from a certain experience you made in the past and that makes you even more rigid around them and not even trying to see whether or not they can be interested into your product, your service or your opportunity. Let me tell you, I know how this feels because I have been there, I have made this mistake. I will share my own story with you, but before then, I want to note that prejudgment can occur in many different ways. It can be very subtle and even unconscious. This means you need to develop a mental mechanism that enables you to catch yourself when you start to prejudging someone or a situation. This is because when you begin to prejudge other people, deciding for them if they will be interested into your product or not, or if that's the right opportunity for them or not, you will never know that maybe you are missing out on catching a very big fish just because you think the pond is not beautiful enough. Remember, the goal is the fish and not the beauty of the pond. So here's my story. I have always read about the danger of prejudgment, but nothing prepared me for the consequences of not following this simple rule. The rule? Give everyone equal opportunity and a chance to prove themselves. I knew the rule, but on this specific occasion, I didn't apply it. So knowing is one thing, but understanding and applying are two totally different things all together. So, there was this guy on my contact list whom I have known for years. While creating my list, 
I came across his name and quickly assumed that he was not going to be interested into the network marketing business. I thought he only loved sports and wouldn't have time for any of these things. So there is no need to waste my time trying to recruit him. And then I deleted his name from my list. But the most heartbreaking thing happened just a couple of years later. About three or four years after that, I saw the same guy at the network marketing event in the same company I work with. He was so full of life and energetic throughout the whole event that I had a feeling of regret seeing him and knowing that he would have been a part of my organization, working with me and with the same passion, only if I had reached out and spoken to him. Clearly, this guy is an asset, but I deleted him from my contact list and didn't even give him a chance. And believe me, you don't want to be in that position. So you need to be careful about how you are approaching your contact list and the judgment going on through your mind as you interact and meet with your contacts. Give everyone the same attention, the same respect and the same level of energy. After that incident, something changed within me. I was no longer writing off people because of my assumptions. I assured that everyone had a chance. So here's the thing, it's not just about having a bigger organization. It's about that feeling that comes with knowing that because of you, someone is making more money and is living a fulfilling life. It's always a win-win situation. This way you are building meaningful relationships with people. Prejudging people will definitely reinforce certain biases you have about a group of people. Even when they eventually join your network, you are very skeptical about them and the results they can bring in. The confirmation bias is a phrase coined by English psychologist Peter Wasson. It's the tendency of people to favor information that confirms or strengthens their beliefs or values. After I learned not to prejudge anyone, I started enjoying the business even more. My network grew larger and included a lot of different people from different backgrounds or fields. This was an enriching experience that opened many doors for me. And this didn't only open doors for me, it also helped my business to become even better. So, because I had diverse people in my team, I could easily reach newer fields and cultures through them. I had every kind of person in my organization and because of this rich mix of people, I was able to do things differently. I could draw ideas and insights from a unique perspective of members in my network. It has been an exciting experience so far. Clearly, having a group of people who think differently guarantees more success than just a group of people doing one thing in a particular way. From my personal experience, I understand that avoiding prejudgment is not as easy as it sounds. It takes a lot of conscious effort. The only way I have learned to make it more conscious is to become aware and also educate myself. One important question to ask yourself is this, what if someone out there is prejudging me and denying me a wonderful opportunity. This question makes you reconsider any time you're about to prejudge someone. So, apart from being aware, you should educate yourself about the diversity of life. Read different biographies. This will make you more understanding of other people's differences. Another thing you should do is to practice listening. The more you learn to listen to others, the more you're able to focus on understanding them and responding right. Communication is important to break down stereotypes and allows you to appreciate diverse viewpoints. And that's not all. One other thing you can adopt is to begin to see every person as an individual. Even though you might have had terrible experiences with a particular person from a specific group, this doesn't mean everyone from this group is just like this person. The thing is, the more you begin to learn how different people are, the more you begin to appreciate their individuality and begin to interact with them as individuals. Lastly, you must commit to learning and self-development. Participate in training programs that focus on social competence and diversity awareness. This will broaden your perspective and help you to become open to everyone to collaborate and build your team effortlessly. 
A diverse team is truly an asset. And another thing it helps you to achieve is accountability. You become more accountable for your actions and decisions you, and become a more rounded business leader with an effective team. So maybe, like me, you have made mistakes in the past. So now it's time to start new. Try implementing these strategies I have shared here. By doing this, you will create a more inclusive, respectful and successful business environment for yourself and your entire team. And if there is one thing I want you to take from everything I have said so far, it is building a system that allows individual styles to flourish. Because this will ensure that you easily balance structure with flexibility. It's not enough to be in the business and recruiting new members. You must insist on being accountable and creating a diverse team. By adopting inclusivity and remaining open-minded, you will not only achieve success, but also developing long-lasting relationships with people from different backgrounds and cultures. So, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Looking forward to see you soon. Until next time, bye-bye.